Now, about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments given by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to stop right there. Remember, we're talking about the Corinthians. They had spiritual gifts going on in that crazy church. Pause, say la, think about that. These people had issue issues. Issues. Problems. Bad behavior. And yet they still had spiritual gifts operating amongst the people. Think about that. Don't stop thinking, well, we got to be, you know, we got to, we got to have it all together before we start operating in spiritual gifts. We got to be double sanctified and triple consecrated. And remember, these are manifestations of the spirit. All the believers have the Holy Spirit exactly. of God and therefore the Holy Spirit is privileged to manifest through God's love. So, so even if yeah. you have <clears throat> spots and wrinkles. The spiritual gifts are still flowing. Still yeah. flowing. Yeah. So the Apostle Paul comes along here and gets involved with apostolic gifting mm -hmm. and answering questions exactly. that the Corinthians had. And therefore, the, the, the way this verse is phrased lets you know. See, it starts with now about the spiritual gifts. Okay, now, okay, let's talk about this now. Mm -hmm. you, you, you wrote us about this. Mm -hmm. These are the special endowments given by the Holy Spirit. Brothers and, and sisters. sisters. In other words, saints. Mm -hmm. I do not want you to be um, uninformed. So, no, but I want you to know. Yeah. So, I don't want you to be ignorant. Yeah. I want you to know. So, Paul is going to be answering some questions here apostolically. Now, Paul didn't love these um, Corinthians. Corinthians. He would not have allowed that apostolic gift to flow. So one of the manifestations of the spirit that was operational in Paul was that apostolic gift. And the people around him knew that. And therefore, they would write Paul the leadership, actually, we'd, we'd, we'd write Paul and say, help us out. Mm -hmm. and Paul said, okay. Okay. Now about these spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. let, let, now, notice what he's saying down here. He doesn't want you to be uninformed. Verse 2. You know that when you were pagans, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Being called out right here. You all were pagans. You were led off after speechless, speechless idols. So they worship idols. Gods that couldn't talk to you. Well, you did. You had to do all the work. You had to do all the sacrifice and all the dancing, all the dancing, all the to try to get an answer from a God who couldn't speak. Okay. All right. However, you were led. However, you were led off, whether by impulse or habit. Therefore, verse I three. want. Yeah, verse three. Go ahead. Therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the power and influence of the Spirit can say, "Jesus be cursed," yep. and no one can say, "Jesus is my Lord," except by the power and influence. Of the spirit. See that apostolic gift there? They told Paul that some of these Corinthians were saying some of this stuff. And what he's here's the here's the thing he's setting up. What he's setting up is these two things can't come out the same mouth. You can't say Jesus is cursed and Jesus is my Lord at the same time. So the apostolic gift there is correcting, correcting the Corinthians there. And so therefore, it takes a manifestation of the Spirit of God to get Paul involved 
in apostolic ministry, and that's what he's doing here. 